the mask and I can't. Man, I, I so much respect for him for doing this. All right, I, I, I just wish he had a bigger budget. Essentially, right? I, I instead of spending like two or three thousand pounds, I wish he was able to spend twenty. And like, don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful that he's making these at all. Uh, I could look up uh, Citadel. Video. Here. So here's his version of uh, the massacre. Telling you, I'm waiting. I I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but the news I have must be given first to the king. Now, what's the matter? Why must I always be interrupted? And I was winning. Your pardon, sir. But uh, and again, I, I mean, like, it's just, I, I don't know. I just don't think it works. Right? Uh, um... I, I, can you just set him up with? It's not called Callum Weston, is it? One second, that, that's his name on his in his channel. His channel is. Hang on, what's this guy's name? Who did this? It is. Ugh. Uh, and he's a kid, man. He he, he just knows what he's doing. Mel uh, Meanly, Mel Me, uh, Mel Meanly, also known as Dino Puff, right? Uh, his version of Celestial Toy Maker. Oh, so beautiful. Absolutely, so beautiful. I, I, that, like that, that is the standard, and I don't understand like how somebody did that on his own. How, what, how it's not happening more, right? It's beyond me, right? It's very beyond me. Anyway, so uh, uh, yeah, man, I'm loving the Ian Levine stuff, right? I'm absolutely adoring it. I, with now my stage play taps Robert Sheehan, Suze Kempner, fucking hell, Suze Kempner's playing one of the, who's she playing? Oh, God, it sounds awful. So, wait, wait. so uh, I'm really gonna, Robert Sheehan, good. Suze Kempner, are you out of your fucking mind? Uh, so, like the film, blah, 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 said. Um, feature Richard e. Grant. Uh, uh, we went on holiday by mistake. Okay, who's, who's she playing? Uh, we'll be playing with now. Uh, at those, Siddiqu is playing Marwood. Malcolm Sinclair. So who's who? Sue's Kempner. Uh, who and Sue's Kempner. Blimey, she's at right at the bottom. Uh, who is this person? Uncle Monty joining them will be Andy uh, uh, Adam Young, Israel J. Fredericks, presuming Ed Morgan, Philip uh, Wanker, uh, Jake the Poacher, Matt Devitt, Farmer Colonel uh, and Band, Adam Sop, Giza Policeman. Band and musical director, and Sue's going. Oh, fine, there she's gone as Miss uh, Bison Hassett, policewoman, and bad. So she's an extra. Fuck me. She's like an extra, a, 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 a deeply untalented extra. Yay, look at me. I'm Sue's Kempner. Oh, anyway, this was actually quite interesting. Should we look at this on the big finish? Like, like somebody told me about this, but I didn't actually see it. It's happening on Friday. So they uh, um big finish. Right? They're continuing River Song. Uh, um and look for me, the range had totally run out of steam, right? Absolutely totally run out of steam. Uh I mean, there you go, like news. So I was like, where like the I can't even, I don't think I even got the last one. Oh, I gotta I, I, I can't bring myself to listen to this one either, Morbius. Right? Oh, God, I'm scared it's gonna be shit. Uh, and, it's, and, and I'm trying to listen to the Quinn dilemma, right? But I'm just, uh, it just feels like so much bloody work, right? I'm just like not feeling it in any way, shape, or form, right? I, I it, like, there's so many Colin Baker stories which, which are, are enjoyable and I don't feel like it's work to listen to, right? Uh, um, which I, and there's nothing wrong with it per se. Yeah. Why is, it Why is it still showing that screen? Oh, no, it's all right. Fine. So, uh, Alex and the stars in the Death of Life Rivers on a brand new series of full cast audio dramas crossing so uh, coming soon from Big Finish. One second. So, wait, wait. River Song. What's the last one they bought out? We'll do um, sort by. Release date recent first. Yeah, so I, the, I I didn't bother with series eight. 
which had in it canines and mechanoids and it just looked boring. Uh, um, I, did, I think I got a Series 7 and I regret um, I I know. Series 6 was the last one I got, I think. Maybe I got a Series 7 and regretted it, but I don't think so. Then, yeah, they wheeled out the Weeping Edit. Look, basically this series was built for River Song to be with classic Doctors, right? That's the point of it. So this one, which is with Paul McGann, and there's a Erstatz Doctor, was very good, the first one. But thirty-seven ninety for the download. I, I, you're having a laugh, right? That's ridiculous. No one's going to be paying that. I mean, you, you genuinely are having a laugh, all right? And it, it's not even worth that, right? Anyway, so the first, like, that's like ten nine ninety nine. That's if you want to sell it, that's what it is. It's nine ninety nine, and that's fair. If you can't do it at that price point, this this business isn't going to work. Simply, right? Uh, um, so then you got the River Song with Sylvester McCoy and Colin Baker. I mean, like, how many more people would listen to this if it was nine ninety nine? Right, or, or uh, they could do a streaming service. Uh, so uh, then they had Fifth Doctor and they bought Madame Kavorian, and none of that one really didn't work. It was a some kind of copy of the Fourth Doctor. Uh, uh, I don't know why they didn't do Tr Tim Trelaw and the Third Doctor, but no, they, then they did a bunch of Masters in the next one, which was, I don't know they were doing lots of Master stuff at the time. It was just kind of becoming a bit grating, right? Um, I did buy that one. Then it had River Song. It, yeah, this is the last one where she stepped into older stories, right? So she stepped into um, Towns of Wing Chiang and uh, Unearthly Child. And, I can't remember what else. Uh, Web of Fear. Oh, they had the same actor who played Captain Knight in Web of Fear, but like he sounded like he was 103 now. Oh, hello, River Song. Uh, it didn't work, right? He just, he should have been playing a different character. They should have had him age somehow or something. I know. It just didn't bloody work, right? Um, sadly, right? Sadly. Or, you know, you, from AI, you could do voice to voice with AI, right? You could modify his voice to sound like his young voice, right? And then you would at least would have got his performance. But who cares? He was kind of an extra 60 years ago, uh, 50 years ago, whatever. Anyway, uh, then we think Angels are oh, fuck me. Last uh, uh, last attempt of the desperate. Um, so yeah, and robots that didn't. Bother. You see, see, it just pitted out. Say the new recruit one was actually really good. I, this one I liked a lot, where she was with the 1970s unit. That that was. But it's not 30 worth 37 fucking 90. I mean, not even with a blowjob from Alex Kingston. I mean, like really. And then don't remember. Two rivers and a firewall. I, who, who, I have no idea. I, I have no. I like I, how they. Yeah, they stopped trying to tie into Doctor at this point. I think. And you had. Um, oh yeah, River Song with Jackie Tyler, which I think is a very good combination versus the Crotons. Um, I, look, look, that's a good idea. I'm just like I'm. I'm like done at this point, right? Like I was like, there's no life left in this at all. Uh, Lizzie Hopley, Tim Foley, James Goss, and Lou Morgan. It, it doesn't sound that great. Also got uh, Kimo Kudroy and Nina uh, Tucson White. Um, is it uh, the smugglers in a Cornish uh, coast and the 18th century is under attack? Uh, never deal with the excise men. What are the crotons? They're uh, running a, a, a health spa. It's fine. Uh, the health crotons in one uh, among the records of the. Planet, an old lady uh, treasures a terrible relic uh, that reminds her of a son. Uh, River Song has come to take it away. That's a bit down. River Song exploring and seeking the hive. Uh, uh, her sister is trapped in the ruins of the. Fuck off. Uh, 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 yeah, look, okay, yeah, Crozons in one story. Why are you selling it at that? So I'm like, it was just creatively dead, right? I don't think they, they will be able to sell it. Anyway. Uh, and after I was in the 50th, uh, 52nd century, born and raised to be an assassin, destined to marry her intended target and to have uh, many of her own adventures to, uh, honestly, too many, sadly. <laughs> like, just uh, enough already. Uh, President Rick's on very messy timeline began and maybe ended 
when she appeared in a 2008 episode of Simpson Library. Yeah, I like that. I mean, look, a lot of this is really clever, good writing by uh, um, Moffat, right? Uh, which I know a lot of people hated. I was speaking only about how great uh, um, the, uh, what's it called again? Uh, Horror Fang Rock is. This, the, the, just the unpretentiousness of it, right? Uh, um, the, and the, which is like the polar opposite to Stephen Moffat. Uh, 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 like, you know, labyrinthy. I mean, I like both of them, but like, uh, listen, I, I, um, I, I like them off it is. Honestly, I do. I think it was a success much more, more than a failure. Anyway, since then, acting has reprised the roles uh, in numerous times in Big Finish Productions, including her own series, The Diary of River Song, which ran from 2005 to 2023. And starting August 24, she will carry on the role in a brand new Death and Life River. I, I don't understand what you're telling me. Like, how is this different in any word, in, in any way? Right, uh, unless it's one unified story, right? Which that's a much better way of getting people to buy things, by the way. Uh, the first box set in the series, Last Words, are written by Robert Valentine. It begins with River after settling down in the afterlife in the library computer, finding herself uh, uh, waking up in Earth's future. Her consciousness has been temporarily transferred to a new body. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Okay, I mean, that's certainly an interesting idea. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not sold yet. I, I, I don't think I will because I'm not that like in love with the character. But that's the, yeah, they're moving her forward. Alec Kenzer said we've gone post library. We've done another episode in the in the past where I was within the database, which I loved, and I thought it's the only way you could uh, go forward with, with River given her situation. So I was uh, actually really surprised when this box set came my way, uh, and we are now uh, so far advanced in the history of Earth. Uh, that she's able uh, to be brought back uh, out as data and put in a clone body. So very clever. Yeah, I, I yeah, very, very clever. I agree with you. I do agree with you. And it's like not the real River song, and maybe she can... If they deal with, like... I, I love the way they did this in Westworld, but if she can go and meet... Consult with her library version, right? That that sort of thing would be really interesting, right? I, um, you know, I could be up for that. Anyway... Uh, so it was very clever. Chris so Aaron said, "We uh, when every single day during the uh, uh, during the recording, your leading actor says this script is brilliant. You know, you uh, you you're on for a good thing. I don't trust anything anymore. Uh, look, you can thank Russell, right? Russell, just I I don't trust you when you tell me something's brilliant, right? I'm sorry. Uh, either uh, yeah, you're on something brilliant. You know, you're on to a good thing." Uh, even better at the end of the day when Alex uh, popped the script in a bag and uh, she announced that she loved Lost World so much that she was taking it home to keep it as a treasure. So I guess this is all uh, one story, which much better, I guess. Um, so how much is it for download? Yeah, 29, 30 bucks. Really? I, I, I don't think so. Who's, so it's just Robert Valentine. It's uh, four discs. I mean, I do like these longer stories, but I just don't think I'm, I'm uh, um, invested enough in the character, frankly. Right? Uh, I really don't. I really don't. Anything else? Are going with Big Finish? No. no, no. I'm, look, War Doctor Rises, yeah, you got me on board for that. I like Jonathan Car Carey. Right? I love... When is that? When is that coming out? Did I pre-order it yet? Um, do, 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 volumes one and two. Yeah, that one thing. Bundle. War Doctor Rises. So when is this? Uh, number one is August. Yeah, I that, this I will totally get. Right. Uh, uh, this is like three discs probably. Yeah, this I'll totally get. I do like. I like Jonathan Car uh, Carey's War Doctor. I like that they're doing it as a single. Uh, Single story. I think that that's really a much better way to go with these things. Anyway, uh, fine. D River Song's back. Fine, we saw that. And you over there? We <laughs> don't like why, right? Let's look at their random thoughts on the trailer. Let's see. Let's see what the brain trust has to say. Uh, so the blah 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 blah. Uh, space. But oh, we did all this already. Oh, leave us alone. I mean that with all sincerity. Uh, Doctor Who season 1 or 14 or 40. 
Disney are confusing. Explain. I don't need to confuse. Former Doctor actor wants to play classic time or video in Scooby Gatwick era. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I have to listen to that audio, right? Um, who is Doctor Velik? T- uh, TNG Romulan in Star Trek Discovery. Okay. Right, this is what I wanted to look at. Uh, here, one second. Okay, this really looks dumb. I'm sorry. All right, I, I, I'm just. This really looks dumb. It's not good, mate. It's not. This genuinely really looks dumb. Uh, Doctor Who Theory uh, reveals the secret TARDIS and Time Lord hidden in the Season 1's trailer. You're saying that's a TARDIS? Season 1 trailer offers uh, what looks like uh, what's in store and a blink and you miss it shot that uh, could hint the Time Lord's return. Are you saying she's the meddling monk? Well, he's... I don't know uh, how they identify. See, everything's fucked up with this shit. Uh, Doctor Who's one trailer it appears to show both a secret TARDIS and a potential uh, potentially a, a Time Lord that's uh, with a potentially a Time Lord the most recent trailer offers a fresh look at what to expect from the Shooty Gatwa upcoming debut season of the 15th Doctor lots, seems to be lots of mugging into camera to me uh, among the many new uh, 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 many new images seen in the uh, seen in the clip is uh, one that you uh, one that looks like a never seen before TARDIS and its owner. So where is this? Uh, so we have Doctor Who and Will Gatwell a team up with Ruby Sunday, but not for long uh, uh, to go on an adventure just through seven weeks. Uh, inevitably, the pair will encounter a whole new host of monsters, enemy, the upcoming seasons, villains. Uh, is already known thanks to a brief shot from the tra- uh, from season one of the status as Time Lords have been confirmed. Who? One of the upcoming villains is already known, and thanks to a brief shot from Doctor Who season one trailer, the season 14 trailer, the status of time has been... Who? Doctor Who season one t- trailer, a piano TARDIS, and Jinx Monsoon as a Time Lord. How has this been confirmed? Fuck off, I hope not. Uh, uh, it could be, um, could the doctor about to come up against one of his own people? I just got these weird, like, note like powers, right? That doesn't seem very time lordy, right? Yeah, I mean, like, these weird, like, see, it makes these notes come real. It just, uh, uh, looks more, oh, fuck off, looks more toy makery to me, right? So, uh, I, you're saying, like, is, how's it confirmed? As well as showing uh, shots of dinosaurs, Regency era, and a group of talking babe. Uh, uh, also shows on Nixon soon, RuPaul Drag Race winner off. New season was announced back in April 2023, and the star is set to appear in the music themed episode, The Devil's Chord. The, the recent uh, uh, trailer finally uh, gave a glimpse at Monsoon's character. In a brief yet immiss- uh, shot, Monsoon appears to be. Uh, behind a, a piano, or rather emerging from it. Well, that doesn't mean she, it's a TARDIS. It's a really, really like, dumb idea. Right? Uh, Monster's upper body is visible. Okay, we saw... Uh, so TARDIS... Oh, fuck off. It's a... Oh, fuck. It's just... I can't believe you're still going on it. Playing a Time Lord might signal Whitaker era retcon. Okay, that, who is this insane person? Callum Jones, Callum, mate, you need to take a chill pill. It's not, it's not, it's not a TARDIS. Uh, I mean, unless it is, I doubt it's a TARDIS. It's, I mean, it's hard from like hard scientific fact, is it? Uh, um, so, where, what is, is this the same thing? Is Craig Elwood going to tell me the same thing? Oh, God, look, it's so stupid. Uh, the main villain of season 14 remains unknown, but a clue was found in blah, blah, blah. What's your clue? Uh, uh, villain is approaching storm. Okay. Uh, uh, Doctor Who's uh, trailer footage, uh, ominous cloud of dust crawling along the streets, mirroring a scene from a disaster. And the narration at the top says, there's a storm coming in. Uh, before a trailer cuts to Jigsaw Monsoon's character speaking for the first time. 
you call. Uh, the editing here heavily implies that Monsoon's... Uh, uh, Again, there could be anything. Why Doctor Who's Jigsaw Monsoon theories may not come true? Because they're full of shit. And who gives a shit? Right? Other details of hint Monsoon will play a one-time Doctor Who villain. That's much more likely. I mean, they had to, like, sl they had to beg, you know, Jinx to do this. Uh, not good. Not good. No. <laughs> none, of, none of this is good. Fine. Uh, what else we got? What's going on over here? Alien Roman talks about... Yeah, I'll talk about this another time. If there's any, let's do the search for Doctor Who. If there's anything in the... In the, in the Jugals. Billy Piper speaks out Chris Eccles' hard time making Doctor Who. Well, that's sad. Well, sad. Um, Doctor Who joins massively popular game show. Lad. BBC Cross... What, 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 what? What's going on? Doctor Who joins massively popular game in, B in huge BBC crossover. Uh, Doctor Who characters have officially joined the Roblox alongside a host of other familiar faces uh, from across BBC as the Broadcasting Corporation launches Wonder Chase video game. Accessible via the wildly popular children's game app on PC, mobile, uh, play, uh, PlayStation, Xbox. By the way, uh, my son's fiance bought him a um, Nintendo Switch. Man, that thing is cool. I'm very impressed with that. Uh, Wonder Central serves as a hub uh, hub world for world for experiences where players can find Roblox incarnations of Louis Theroux, Zara de Mont, and CBBC's Hacker T Dog. Uh, um, among other uh, portals and more specific zones. These include Total Sport, an island theme for uh, Match of the Day, Tiny Planet, which shrinks them down to nature uh, from Liz Bonin and Steve Baxel, and Festive Park, a celebration of uh, whatever. Uh, one of the most popular editions is going to be the Deep Space Zone with, uh, with an otherworldly map featuring Shooting Out with Millie Gibson's Ruby Sunday. We'll be also tracking down a mysterious goblin. Yeah, that's interesting. Here, let's get the official trailer. Hang on. Copy link address. I mean, it's not really for me, but, like, it sounds pretty cool. Uh, I, You know, I just think they're expecting this uh, uh, era of Doctor Who to be much more successful than it's going to be. Right? Like I was, right? Like every, Like we all were. I don't think that I, I just don't think it's going to work out that well, honestly. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah, I got a bit of a headache already, but okay, it's not for me. I understand. I mean, this is what I think the BBC should be doing, frankly. And, and look, what's that sticker? And this is definitely good product placement. Time will tell, all right? All right, this is definitely good product placement. Yeah, um, generally speaking, a good idea. I, I honestly, it just occurs to me like I, I was saying this the other day like, this new version of Doctor Who is TikTok Doctor Who, like TikTok version of what, what Doctor Who uh, uh, would be, right? And, and I said, you know, they should just make a TikTok season, right? And they would be much happier. They should do that with a bunch of shows. That's like a revolutionary way to go. So, what well, the 10 worst episodes? I mean, it's Kill the Moon. I, I, I mean, you would have to exclude I, I mean, all the Jodie Whittaker's ones, right? I mean, like, Alien Island World War Three. What are you talking about? That was great. Okay. Well, just, I, I'm, just, I'm not even going to, like, read their rationale. Last experiment. Yeah, that was, that was shit special effects. Uh, Orphan 55 is worse, right? Nightmare and Silver, Orphan 55 is way worse. Right? I, uh, um, Kill the Moon. Uh Better than Orphan 55, even though it was shit, right? Uh, but, okay, 
Uh, Battle of uh, Ranskor Alphacolos is worse than Orphan 55, right? Okay, if that's... Uh, uh, long Game is way better than Orphan 55. Fear Her, but then, like, okay, it's still better than Orphan 55. Doctor with the more was like way better than Orphan 55. Four after the night, marginally better than Orphan 55. I mean, Kabad was great. Orphan 55, the worst story of all time. Jodie Whittaker only got two. What about Arachnids in the UK? Are you out your mind? Hey, one second. Doctor Who episode guide. Fine. Are we, can we do a list? A ranking of the worst Jody of let, let's see Jody Whitaker's episodes, right? Where are they? Uh fine. Well, let, let's do that. Okay, I think this is a good plan. You know, I, I it, it has it, you know, they have uh as Khan says, they task me. They task and I will have my vengeance. Fine, so let's start over here and we'll share the screen. Fortunately, they, they didn't make that many. Uh, I'll say fortunately many were, uh, on many levels. The woman who fell to earth. What? Actually, honestly, while being bland shit, I, I wasn't that bad. And I thought um, the ghost uh, monument was actually ne nearly a good uh, episode. Uh, then we got Rosa. Oh, racist shit. Right, I mean, absolute racist shit. Um, uh, Arachnids in the UK, worse. Uh, Arachnid. Oh, wait, I'm doing, I'm doing this the wrong way around. I'm doing the worst episodes, not the best episodes. Right, doing. So, um, Ghost Monument is probably gonna be one that would be up among the best. And then we do Arachnids in the UK. Uh, Arachnids. In the UK. Okay. UKL. The Suranga conundrum uh, is marginally less awful. Uh, how am I spelling this? Like? Suran. Su, was it? The T S U U R C T S. You are. I fucking hate these names, right? A N A. No, A N G A. Oh, conundrum. Conundrum was a good episode of uh, 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 Star Trek, I should say. Um, Demons of the Punjab. Oh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. What's worse? I mean, this is really hard. Okay, Demons of the Punjab is better than Sarangu. Okay, Demons of the Punjab. Okay. Then we got Kablam. That was a weird episode that, that like didn't make any sense. Right? Um, right? Uh, Kablam. Right, but they've, this, there's been so many worse, so many worse ones. Which finders are uh, about the same, I'll say. Which finders same levels here? It takes you away. Oh, 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 one second. That's a whole new level of shit. Okay, that is yeah. It takes okay, so it takes you away. Oh look, another bad father. Isn't that fun? It takes toy away. Away. It takes you. I mean, it's it's, su it's such a bad title. Ugh. Takes you away. All right. I mean, it really is. It really genuinely is. Uh, uh, and then you got oh, God. Battle. Of, uh, that's a pretty darn bad one. Uh, oh, demons. Demons. Uh, so then they got Battle of Earth, a pretty darn bad one. Uh, uh, I mean, I, yeah, well, so I think it goes over here, right? Cause just because there's so many bad episodes. The Battle of Earth. Oh, bloody hell. 
Rants core. Oh god, I mean this is just agony of Kolos. Right? Um oh, Arach Arachnids, there you go. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, right, this is up there with... So Resolution was one of their better ones, so I'm going to say... I'll put it over here. Resolution... And it was shit, okay? When no one's arguing, it was shit. Where's the next season? Season 12. Uh, Spyfall. Spyfall was one, one of their better episodes as well. I mean, like, they were all shit. But um, I'll put it above resolution. But they're still shit. Spy for one and two. We're going to put them together. Orphan 55 dying. Beats Arachnids and Orphan 55. Yeah, this is a bad season. Nikolai Tesla's Night of Terror. Boring shit. Oh, um, yeah. Nikolai, uh, Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. I mean, it's just such a bad title. It's breathtakingly awful, right? Future of the Jadoon. Like, this is one they say is one of their bestest ever, and it really isn't. Um, I mean, it introduces... The whole uh, future doctor, which they do very badly, right? Um, whew, where to put that? But other than that, it's the average shit episode, better than normal, right? So um, you got to weigh up cannon destroying with uh, like general proficiency, right? So uh, um, how, where would you go on this? I think average out for so cannon destroying. Give it like a minor, like give it a ten in shitness, right? For proficiently, proficiently, give it a seven, give it a three, right? Uh, um, middle old score being better, right? So thirteen divided into two, six and a half. Okay, fine. So it goes over here, right? Man, a fugitive of the juice. I thought, I thought it would go here. Fugitive of the ju and it's basically it's so high up. And solo down because of those two issues, right? Uh, uh, but there we have Praxius. Fuck me. That's really up there. Um, I mean, again, the racism of Praxius. Um, can you hear me? Fuck that. Go I goes right here, baby. Can you? You hear me? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. Uh, the hoarding of Villa Dildo. Um, that one was really okay. That was a better one, right? And it was really, uh, um, uh, uh, it was really hurt only by by Whitaker's performance, right? And the regulars and it being shit, right? Other than it being shit, it, it was okay. So I'm going to put it over here. Let's move this over here so I can just read it. The Haunting of Villa Dildo, which is what I'm calling it, okay? That's just that's just the word for it now. The Haunting. Haunting. There you go, Villa Dildo. Uh, Ascension of the Sidemen. Well, <laughs> um... Yeah, that I mean, there's a lot of good about that. I like the Cybermen about that, but it's still like generally shit, so it's got to go higher up. Uh, yeah, look here, yeah. uh, Ascension of the Cybermen and Timeless Children. Oh, that's way up here. Um, fine. Number two or number one? Timeless children. Okay. And then there was Revolu Revolution of the Dalek. Right? Um, again, one of the, the least shit episodes. 
Revolution of the Dalek. So as we go, we do this list. We're going to go over their list again, right? And we're going to see if any of these ones, if any of the ones on the list, are worse than uh, uh, I don't know, the, anything in the top ten, I guess. Or maybe let's see. I want to see the uh, um, the uh, 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 how many we get that are jo Jody episodes that are worse than the ones than they than they list as the worstest episode. So. Revolution of the Dalek. I mean, saved by Captain Jack, essentially. Fine. So let's go over to the next year. So now we're on to Flux, which I, I honestly, I think they, they got better as they went along, right? They finally worked out how not to be a complete fuck up, right? Uh, uh, Doctor Who Flux. Uh, so I don't know. Should you do Flux as one story or as six stories? Uh, I'm going to say one story. Right, because it's well, it's one narrative. Now, is it any good? Okay, so it is okay. Here's what they have in the plus. It is epic. If it's one huge story, it is it is an epic story, uh, and they they had very good cliffhangers, right? Um, they had a lot of good about it with the uh, carbon. Now, now, what's always destroying it though is. Um, uh, uh, the it, it's uh, Jodie Whittaker, right? Essentially, Jodie Whittaker's performance, right? But that's Jodie Whittaker's performance and, and and Chibnall's like very poor writing, right? But that's much less. Pro so I'm going to put it like uh, flux over here. That's probably the best thing they did. Oh, it's up there, right? It's up there. Uh, it's it's it, it's it's totally up there individually. No, let's do this one thing. I mean, it's much less of a headache, quite frankly. Uh, quite frankly, but yeah, I'm going to say Flux is the best thing they did. And the specials, what the one they did? Even the Dark, no, even the Daleks is the best thing they did. Look, Eve of the Daleks, Daleks, right? Uh, <laughs> the Sea Devils. Oh, uh, uh, that goes way up here. Uh, that's really bad. Legend of the Sea Dev. It's really bad. I mean, it, it makes uh, um, what's the name look look like Shakespeare. Makes um, I was gonna say Underwater Menace. No, I'm thinking of uh, Warriors of the Deep. It makes Warriors of the Deep look look like Shakespeare, genuinely, right? Then the Power of the Doctor. Uh, yeah, that's the best one of the Doctor, right? So this is a a list of. Uh, Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, um, let me say this, uh, uh, shit is the best, right? So we do, uh, on the desktop. Ah, where is it? There we are. Jodie Whittaker rankings. Fine. So now we got this list, right? Let us now compare it to that article. Let's see if any of these ones... All right, uh, uh, was worse somehow. One second, we start with. Uh, so we go, it starts with Aliens London. No, Aliens London is better than everything on that. It's better than Power of the Doctor, right? Easily. Lazarus Experiment, better than Power of the Doctor. Easily. Nightmare and Silver is better than Power of the Doctor. Easily. Kill the Moon, better than Power of the Doctor. Only just. Only just. Not easily. Battle of Rango, well, we, we, you're on the list already, darling. Long game, way better than Power of the Doctor. Fear her, better than Power of the Doctor. Uh, Doctor Winner, better than Power of the Doctor. For the Night, marginally better than Power of the Doctor. Maybe even not, right? I don't know, that was a pretty bad one. All 55, uh, uh, worse than Power of the Doctor. <laughs> So that none of them even touch the. Are you out your mind? Right, right. I mean, like, this is totally the ranking of Doctor Who. I, I, I am correct on this. But yeah, Lil, uh, 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 all things don't seem great uh, at Cardiff. Yeah, can I reboot? Get there. We go, man. At first, I thought this was Billy Piper. I was like, fuck me, she's looking rough, right? Uh, 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 I mean, this is really looks looks like it's it's intimating it's Billy Piper. Uh, so, no, this is a former Newsnight producer, not Billy Piper, right? So, Billy Piper speaks down Chris Eccleston's 
hard time making Doctor Who. I knew a struggling Piper told, uh, exclusively told the Independent. Um, that's really sad, right? I mean, it's like, I have to, yeah, well, something that does genuinely upset me is seeing how Chris really wasn't looked after, right? I, um, I, and I can't, look, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. I think they were, um, you know, re inventing a new style of television that hadn't been done before in the UK, right? And I think there was a lot of pressure on that. And I think dealing with Chris was one of the things that fell through the cracks. They really should have a producer just to deal, uh, uh, deal with him. But he felt very adrift. He clearly didn't understand the character. Uh, and he, he needed more direction on the character. And he felt he only really got it by the time he got uh, Moffat's script, right? Honestly, I think it would have been a great idea to have uh, Chris hang out for uh, you know a few uh, for a few days with each of the writers of that. Like Mark Mark Gattis would say, "What is Doctor Who to him?" What his and then he would have uh, he would hang out with uh, Stephen Bob. He'll say, "What's Doctor like?" What, and have all these people who really understand Paul Cornell. Who actually people do understand Doctor Who, right? Explain to and I think and I think that would have built more of a uh, camaraderie and also uh, um, I, I I I don't think this particularly helped his his mental um, um, his his mental health, right? But okay, let, let, I'm putting words in my mouth. I haven't read this. Let's see what we have to uh, what they have to say. Um, <laughs> by Avid Sneak Boys uh, saying he really watched uh, Are You Being Served? It's much dirty and remember. Oh, God. See, that was the, that's when TV was great, where you could be dirty and it was fine. Oh, don't, I mean, don't you remember Mrs. Slocum talking about pussy? All the time? Like every week, right? Every week, it was like, oh, my pussy. Oh, it needed a good stroke. <laughs> Whatever. And like, I never got it. I remember my parents looking at me and laughing hysterically. Oh, God, do you remember when, t when TV was fun and innocent and dirty all at the same time? Oh, Billy Piper has spoken about the sanity development here in Chris Eccles' struggle while making Doctor Who, uh, their Doctor Who's uh, 2005 series together. Their 2005 series of Doctor Who together. A23, the actress starred in a career-making role as Rose, Rose Tyler. I forgot she was that young. And it was a career-making role. I mean, look, look, she she wasn't coming from nowhere. She would just been in Canterbury Tales, and she was that's the all I all I I didn't even see Canterbury Tales. I just went to watch it or the clips of her in it because I knew she was in Doctor Who. But right? just the same way I watched Casanova because I really thought uh, David Tennant was going to be the, the new Doctor Who, right? Um, and. Uh, um, but yeah, I know she she uh, like heard she was a music career. I had a music career. I heard a bunch of people were nervous because of that. She was excellent. It, it was a career making role. I forgot she was so young, right? Uh, and also she was just divorced a year earlier or something. She she she's had a very tumultuous few years, as I recall, and she just really came out of it with Doctor Who. So each of the extra star in a career making role uh, role of Rose Tyler, the commander echoes of Doctor. She later, after several TV award wins, returned to the show for uh, alongside the tenth Doctor David Tennant. Well, last year she appeared at a fan convention alongside Excellent, who, had, who gave a negative opinion to that, calling it a mess. Right, the series was a mess, and it was uh, it wasn't to do with me or Billy. It was the people who were supposed to make it. He hates the production team. Right? Oh my God! Yeah, listen. Uh, 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 if I became emperor of the world, right, and uh, I would mostly, f after, you know, dealing with all the corruption around the world uh, quite easily, uh, 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 my, I would put my focus into media, my uh, main focus into Doctor Who. So uh, uh, if I was making Doctor Who and called Chris up and say, hey, Chris, you want to come back for, for like a movie of the week for uh, Doctor Who? Flashback or something. Or say, yeah, we'll bring you back for some reason. Uh, but you'll be your own man, right? You'll be in your own thing. Do you want to do it? He said, yeah. Uh, um, it's it's he hates the production team, right? Uh, uh, and it's tragic he hates them so much. I understand it. He's probably got fucked over. That's why. He said at the time, uh, uh, revealing that he would only return to the show if Rusty Day was sacked. Uh, 
<laughs> or, or he wasn't worth him. Uh, speaking of the independent, uh, Piper said that she was unaware how negatively uh, excellent felt about this. Well, how bad it was, him leaving it like destroyed his life, right? Uh, uh, really disgustingly, right? It, it really, they really, the BBC destroyed his fucking life. They blackboard him. He wasn't able to work in the UK. He had to go to America. Had to star in like GI Joe. Uh, was it not? G, was it GI Joe three or some shit? Like, and uh, four two. And he hated every minute of it. And then he made it to a very good show called The Leftovers. All right, and gave, gave a really great performance uh, all the way through that. But he he always does. Man, that Leftovers is a great show. It's a real slow burn, right? Real slow burn. Uh, um, uh, I know. Uh, I I now know he was having a hard time, but I'm not sure I understood at uh, the time how troubled he was with with it all. Again, he, he really was like 23, and she was like divorced and had all this like shit with her life about you know being starved to uh, during her music career. Uh, I was going through a lot. Okay, I was going through a lot of personal stuff. I think that's where my focus was. I was really close to those guys, uh, the whole production team. Re yeah, really. Again, it's so sad because it really feels like you had, you know, Jane Tranter, um, Julie Gardner. Well, it was more Julie Gardner, uh, Phil Eccles, uh, Phil, um, whatever his name is, and Rusty Davis, right? The three who, who ruled as one. But they were really felt like it was a, it, they felt happy. But again, Chris just wasn't in. Didn't make it to that equation, right? I just I, they best. It, it was just something. I, I think it's something that fell through the cracks, essentially. All right? I I really I guess yeah. I think if they just uh, arranged for Chris to talk to people to feel comfortable about the character, I think that would have changed everything, right? I really do, right? And have somebody who he can talk to to air out his concerns, right? I think that would have made a huge difference. But who know? Yeah, you know, who knew going back then, right? Uh, she made it. She was she uh, was slightly swept up in the starriness of a big screen, uh, big, um, a big screen TV. She wasn't focused on the interpersonal grievances within the crew. It was my first. It was uh, one of my first big acting. You know, so I was like, "Way!" I mean, she was having so much fun. I, that's really one of the fun things about. And I think what's different about this current era, the 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 joy they had seemed much more genuine. Right. Um, here it seems like yeah, we much more false because they've been told to be happy, right? But there, the and yeah, I think a big reason for that joy is because people didn't expect it to be uh, do as gangbusters as it did, right? It's crazy how good it did. Um, and I think it shocked everybody. It's success has shocked everybody, right? Including Rusty Davis. Uh, so I was like, way grateful, 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 loving it, loving it. Can't believe I'm finally doing the job I want. Uh, can't believe I'm working with all these incredible people. Can't believe I'm working with Chris Wacker. Can't believe I'm rebooting a brilliant classic. I can totally see that, right? I can totally see that's why, uh, uh, why she was like swept up in it. And now she looks back and she sees like how much Christopher was, uh, was suffering and it really taints that memory. It's sad. Right, it's really sad. Uh, oh, scoop! Somebody else told me to look at. So, so it's she's her and Gillian, uh, Gillian Anson. Okay, I think that I might, I might have to look at that. <laughs> Fuck one second. We'll we'll, we'll, go, we'll, go, we'll put the trailer in a minute. Um, it was kind of sad to hear that. Really, I knew he was struggling, but yeah, I thought it was it, it was just scheduling and things like that, which were often tr uh, uh, a tricky part of of what we do. Uh, Pyro didn't hesitate to say she was delighted to return to the universe. Uh, I want to go back as a full-time thing, but I'd uh, love to make another appearance, she said. Uh, so she's in Netflix's new film, Scoop, which depicts the events behind Prince Andrew's infamous car crash. She used that interview with BBC broadcaster uh, Maitlis, played by the Crown's Gillian uh, 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 Anderson. Okay. Uh, I hate Susie Anxer, uh plays Newsnight's interview uh, interview booker who uh, who is the author of the book and the film is based on Scoop behind that. Okay. I, I, I'm kind of intrigued. Yeah, I think I would like to see that, right? I do think I would like to see that. Fine. 
So yeah, look, uh, um, does it, that bring, no, this brings up an interesting thing. Was it a t- toxic workplace? Well, for some, yes. For some, no. Uh, uh, I don't think it was toxic for John Barrowman getting his dick out. Uh, although some people may, may have found it so, right? I don't know. Uh, uh, I just wish they had... I just wish Eccleston was treated more with like kid gloves. You know, I I, rem- I, uh, I remind of a line in, in Mad Men when somebody wrangles the uh, Uber uh, creator Don Draper, the uh, uh, creator director of the the Sterling Cooper um, uh, company, very important, and they have this account man who's like very powerful but also somewhat younger than him. Oh, they got a complicated history. He says. <laughs> They said, don't mess with him. That's some that's some expensive horse flesh. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, talking about Dorian. Kind of the same thing I think about um, Christopher Eccleston, Doctor Who. That's some expensive horse flesh you're wrangling there, mate. Expensive horse flesh. Uh, and then BBC pulls out that bully pipe says you want to do more Doctor Who. Uh, Samuel says he wants to play um, always alongside Shooty Gatwa. Well, everybody wants a job, mate. You know, uh, uh, and just still, I've listened to your thing and I haven't I haven't heard you yet. Uh, Doctor Who, the moment kind of discover the universe is chaos. Nah, I guess that's good. What else we got? Uh, oh, here we go. New Doctor Who series launches from Titan Comics in June. Uh, okay, I like that launch with Cybermen. Dan Waters and Kelsey Ramsey take on the 15th Doctor. I'm glad they got a new creative team because the last one was awful. What's Dan Waters done? Um, in the Six Fingers and Loki. I've never heard it. It's set to write the 15th Doctor series with Kelsey Grammer. Um, on the artwork. Okay. I, uh, uh, check out the covers made by uh, variants by Artie Game and Christopher Jones. I guess I'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll review them when they come out, right? Let's have a look. Uh, okay, okay, you know, this is where um, AI has really hurt the world because I'm looking at that, I know it's hand-painted, and I think, well, AI will probably be uh, uh, very good. No, Art Germ, this is, this is AI then, I think. Art, what's cover eight? Art Germ? What is Art Germ? Art germ. What? Is that a... Oh, it's an illustrated, I think. Stanley Art Germ Lau. Okay, it does look like him. Fine. Just doesn't look like his greatest work, perhaps. <laughs> uh, where, where'd they go? Okay, and then there's this one. I, I really like to see what the interior art looks like, frankly. All right. But okay, look, they're starting with a classic uh, classic monster. I, I certainly found the Doctor Who magazine uh, a strip being very lackluster. All right. Um, so you get a free comic book. Okay, it will be a free comic book story ahead of the first issue following the 15th Doctor and Ruby Sunday. What is around you will still be at the crazy scene behind the adventure. Fine. Pre all the issue here. Comes out the 4th of May. Uh, excited for the interview. We'll be checking out. Let us know what you think. The editors will comment. Uh, as more and more fandoms move away from marginal support, they've. Uh, what? Are you excited for this new series? Will you be checking out? Let us know what you think on social media or in the comments below. Editors comment. As more and more fans move away from marginal support, from the marginals that they offer to the LGBTQ plus community, it's exciting to see Doctor Who embrace it wholeheartedly. Uh, I'm here for it. Well, good for you. Uh, most normal people aren't, sadly, right? Most normal people are not here for it. Of course, it's, it's the uh, news beat. <laughs> yeah, most normal people are not here for it. Not going, yay. Well, this is going to be fan dabby double dozy. Right, this is going to be fan freaking tastic! Yay! No, no, no one's saying that, mate. No one's saying that. Ah, uh, we got here. Doctor Who sees that. No, 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 no. Let me just make sure there's no new articles. Fine. <sighs> like, I, yeah, I don't know how those covers got made. It blows my mind, right? It really blows my mind. 
Uh, Dr. Who's Prize Return, The Harsh Truth of Rusty Davis and Moffat Eras. Mm. What is the harsh, uh, the harsh truth? I, I'm intrigued. Color me intrigued, baby. Uh, where are we up to? Uh, Stephen Moffat is returning to Doctor Who to write an episode. However, his comeback emphasizes the harsh truth of his and Davis's eras. What's the harsh truth that was successful? Uh, Stephen Moffat is making Doctor Who come back, but the return uh, uh, to the show highlights the harsh reality of both his and Russell T. Davis' eras. It was recently announced that former showrunner Moffat had penned an episode for an upcoming uh, season 14 story. Season 1, baby. Season 14? No, season 1, baby. Um, oh. I wonder if I pull my... Here, let me pull my rest of my coffee into my ice... Yeah, I, got, I haven't got much left. The ice and ice tea. Should turn it into ice coffee for the last bit of it. There you go. There you go. Always thinking, baby. There is no opposition on the genius switch. That's all you need to know. Fine, where are we up to? Uh, so it's going to be season one. While Moffat has the good news to many, it was a risk to return to a few problems that plagued uh, his era and his predecessor. Like what? Oh, I need to do that. Uh, da, 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 da. See, season 14, so we'll see Russell Davis once again assuming the role of Doctor Who's showrunner. And he's writing, like, six of the eight episodes, I believe. Having previously helped the show in 2005 and 2010, to help him out, he's called upon... The, blah, blah, yes, this is... Get your fucking point, you... Oh, God, it's agony. How can I futz around for as long as humanly possible before I get to a point? Do they pay you by word? Oh, dumb cunt. Anyway, I don't know. You're dumb. Maybe you're not a dumb cunt. You, you're just acting. I'm not a real dumb cunt. I just play one on TV. Uh, uh, Moffat will be writing an upcoming episode, uh, upcoming shooting Catwoman episode, but obviously the details of which remain unknown, we know. However, Moffat's return flags the heart. Fuck me! Okay, uh, I've asked truth about uh, modern Doctor Who that's hard to swallow. Moffat and Davis rely too much on each other. Fine, so it's taken them one, two. Okay, it seemed longer. It seemed longer because they, be, they were just annoying me. So what do you mean? I mean, they're both good writing Doctor Who, so yeah. Ross Davis first era as Doctor Who showrunner is often considered a golden age. And it was a golden age of the show. Whether you liked it or not, it was the golden age of the show. During the initial time in charge, Davis successfully resurrected the show from cancellation in 89 and restored it to its popularity and enjoyed since the early 70s. I'll say beyond that, really. Uh, Davis achieved this by putting emphasis on world building. Uh, in fact, at one point in the late 2000s, Doctor Who had formed the shared multiverse with Torture and Sarah Jane Adventures. Yeah. Uh, at, but the, at the heart of it, right? was a um, great stories. Great stories about characters that you cared about, right? For, okay, so what's your... Can you make a bloody point, okay? On the whole, Moffat's approach is even that blah, 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 rivers on, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, Moffat gave the impression that he was making things up as he went along. No, he didn't. Though it continued through... Uh, okay, whatever. Okay, this... Now... I've got to reboot, the, reload the page. This is the best Moffat Davis pairing possible, right? So, uh, in the harsh reality of modern t uh, modern Doctor Who, is that Davis and Moffat rely on each other to cancel, out, cancel the other one out. Davis is an okay. This is a dumb, dumb theory that doesn't work in any way. It's just a dumb theory. Like what? Like by generation? Blah blah. They're by generation followed by Jody. Off. That's a dumb theory. My name's Vila Beck in the Rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah.